Throughout my talk, when you hear me say, so good, if it resonates with you, I need you to loudly respond by saying, mm-hmm. Let's practice. Feeling loved and appreciated is so good. Deeply connecting with someone is so good. Consensual and pleasurable sex is so good. Now you probably weren't expecting a person who dresses like me or who appears religious to say that out loud. You may have been thinking, no way, that person is a sexual being. But why? Why do we instantly disassociate our spirituality and sexuality as if the two could not coexist? My name is Dr. Shakira Abdullah. I have a PhD in human sexuality. I am a sexologist. A sexologist is an expert on sex that helps people live healthier and more satisfying sexual lives as married couples, parents, and even single people. We do this through research, sexuality education, counseling, and more. I would like to share a few stories with you about some of my clients. For confidentiality purposes, all names were changed. The first clients I want to tell you about are Kareem and his wife Khadija. They were happily married and have four children, ages three, five, 10, and 15. Kareem and Khadija were both born and raised in Muslim households, religious households, to parents who loved them, showed them all the affection that a child could ever ask for, but their parents never talked to them about sex, their bodies, or relationships. This was a problem. Kareem and Khadija felt sex and their sexuality was a dirty thing since it was such a hush-hush topic in their communities growing up. Sex being considered a dirty word is a common misconception amongst many people. Even though many religions, such as Islam, view sex as a beautiful gift from God and a special privilege to be experienced within marriage, Kareem and Khadija still held on to these feelings of shame about sex. To them, Sex just did not feel good to talk about out loud. Kareem and Khadija came to me because they wanted to feel comfortable with talking about sex, not only with each other as a couple, but talking to their children about sex too. Since their parents never talked to them about sex, or their parents, or their parents, Kareem and Khadija felt confused, lost, and just awkward about having these conversations with their kids about sex, not to mention how to include the spiritual side of things. It was time for a change. I taught Kareem and Khadija that sex education should begin in the home. But how do we do it? Easy, my Halal Sex Talks course and blueprint. I developed this talks blueprint to be used as a framework for Muslims and parents of all faiths to learn how to talk to their kids about sex while integrating their spirituality. So let me break this down. The top portion of the chart is the action point while the bottom portion is a spiritual reminder to help parents with the action. So the first letter is T. T stands for teachable moments, which are ordinary, unexpected situations that we can talk about. For Kareem and Khadija, it was a random question their five-year-old had about where do babies come from? The spiritual side of teachable moments is tawakkul in Arabic, which means trusting in God's plan and a reminder to parents that they are being confronted with this teachable moment for a reason. You can do this. A stands for assess their knowledge in a non-judgmental way so we can better understand the child's perspective. The spiritual side of this is parents remembering that our children are in a manner, our tremendous trust and responsibility that parents are going to be held accountable for, while also remembering that the most merciful is not going to put a burden on them that they cannot bear. L stands for listen and reflect. The spiritual side of listening is the Arabic saying, la hawa wa la kawasa illa billah, which ultimately focuses on situations being out of our control and listening to the child so we can help. K stands for knowledge building. Here we talked about age appropriate content for every age group. Sexuality education is very broad. It is not only about intercourse. Sex education also is also about puberty, bodily hygiene, preventing abuse, communication, our feelings, marriage prep, pleasure, and so much more. Here, I taught them what to say and how to say it for every age group. Extensive research has proven that this blueprint helps parents talk more often with their kids about a wider range of sexuality topics. 
The spiritual side of knowledge building is the Arabic word kitab Allah, which means the book of God. Kareem and Khadija connect the stories of the book to their sex education. So back to their five-year-old's question about where do babies come from? Kareem and Khadija use the story of Noah's Ark and how he collected a male animal and a female animal of each species. They explain why Noah was commanded to do this in an honest, factual way without being vulgar. S stands for skill development and learning how to make good decisions. The spiritual side of this is sugar or gratitude for parents having the opportunity to, to practice with their kids before their children encounter situations when parents are not around. Kareem and Khadija learned how to talk to their kids about a variety of sexuality topics while integrating their spirituality in a fun and comfortable way. Kareem and Khadija not only increased their knowledge about having these conversations, but they significantly boosted their confidence. They said, Doc, combining spirituality and sexuality with our kids is so good. <laughs> Another one of my clients was a single person named Aaliyah. I met Aaliyah at one of my exclusive sexual wellness retreats called Reclaiming Me. I led Aaliyah and a group of other women on luxurious escapes in Morocco, Spain, and parts of the US. These retreats were designed for married and single women to step away from their hectic lives and rediscover their true spiritual and sexual essence. Not to mention our personal chef and private was our photographer. Before attending my retreat, Aaliyah felt that in order to be a pious person, she needed to completely ignore her sexuality even though it was a natural piece of herself. Our bodies were designed in a way to experience pleasure. From engaging with this incredible world through our senses to recognizing organs like the clitoris whose sole function is to enable sexual pleasure. The clitoris is extremely sensitive and has over 10,000 nerve endings. Compare that to the head of the penis that has about 4,000 nerve endings. And did you know that the clitoris it's actually a lot bigger than a lot of people think. Its head or gland slightly protrudes at the tip of the clitoris, allowing direct stimulation, while the larger internal aspects of the clitoris are beautifully hidden inside the vulva for layers of pleasure. At our retreat, Aaliyah and the other women learned all about the existence of their God-given clitoris. They felt liberated and empowered. Aaliyah realized that she can become her best spiritual and sexual self without having to compromise her religious values or her chastity. We spent days participating in transformative workshops focused on reclaiming her sexuality through the lens of her spirituality without shame. The clitoris is a body part that makes sex so good. <laughs> the truth is our spirituality and sexuality can complement each other. Maintaining a healthy balance between the two can lead to deeper connections with the creator and our loved ones, inner peace and gratitude for our amazing bodies inside and out, and mind-blowing sensational sex with your spouse where you feel safe enough to be unapologetically you. The last story I want to share is not about one of my clients, but a close friend of mine. As part of our sexuality is our reproductive health, I want to share her story. Her name is Rebecca, she's vegan, and only eats plant-based foods. Rebecca found out she was pregnant and was so excited. You see, Rebecca experienced many fertility challenges in the past, so this pregnancy meant the world to her. One day, Rebecca called me almost in a panic because she just found out her iron levels were extremely low. And although this was common for a vegan diet, Rebecca knew that I wasn't only a sexologist, but also a family nurse practitioner with experience with helping sustain healthy pregnancies. I could hear the fear in her voice, so I invited her over for dinner so we could discuss this further in person. I prepared dinner thinking to myself, now I know meat products are a great source of iron, but for Rebecca, meat is not an option as it goes against her values and beliefs as a vegan. So what can I do? I can look up delicious vegan recipes and offer her plant-based options like lentils, spinach, and kale for dinner. This way, Rebecca can maintain her values while meeting her bodily needs for iron. 
Based on my recommendations, Rebecca was able to add iron-rich vegetables and beans to her daily diet and ultimately gave birth to a healthy baby girl. Similar to vegans choosing to let their values guide their food choices, religious people choose to prioritize their faith by following guidelines with sexual behaviors. Now, this does not mean that any of the two are missing out. Similar to a vegan trying new tasty plant-based recipes to satisfy their cravings, a religious person can enhance their sexual well-being by trying new pleasurable experiences that align with their beliefs. These people have simply decided that the best thing for them is to let their values and beliefs shape their actions. In closing, our sexuality involves our entire human experience. It is as broad and unique as we are human beings. Religious and spiritual people can still learn about new pleasurable experiences that align with their beliefs and practice them. I challenge you to be open to trying new things within those boundaries, but without feelings of shame or guilt as experiencing pleasure is your birthright gifted to you by your creator. Enjoy it. Become your best spiritual and sexual self and feel so good. <laughs> Thank you.